Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Yale 2153. This is a standard mortise cylinder with the 2160 cam, inch and three eighths length, para keyway, and a black suede powder coat is what it is. Uh, let's take a closer look at that right now. So the only thing uh, unusual about this cylinder is that it's just a little bit longer than standard. Uh, a standard cylinder is going to be inch and an eighth, inch and a quarter. Uh, let's take a look. A 2153, the standard length of that is, uh, well, available, of course, in one inch. Depending on what the lock that you're getting it supplied with, it could be inch and an eighth. Um, a typical mortise cylinder lock is going to come with an inch and an eighth um, length mortise cylinder. And... The length of the cylinder is measured from the underside of the head to the back of the cam. That's inch and three eighths. This is an inch and three eighths cylinder. That's on every one cylinder, with the exception of best. They measure the underside of the head to the back of the body itself, not including the cam. Um, you'd only really have to deal with mortise cylinders from all manufacturers to bump into that um, bit of knowledge, but. You know, the statement all manufacturers measure their mortise cylinders from the other side of the head to the back of the cam. It's not, that's not actually correct. It's, um, it's almost, it's almost all. Best doesn't know why they do it that way, I've asked. Um, I mean, I have a theory, but it doesn't really matter to a Yale uh, video. So inch and three-eighths, why would you need an inch and three-eighths cylinder? Well, in conventional core, it's probably because you have a thicker door or your application is making it seem like it's a thicker door. What I mean by that is you could have a standard, a relatively standard door thickness, but your lock may not be centered in the thickness of the door. That would be pretty unusual in a um, application like this, um, where you would need a, th uh, a longer cylinder based on a standard thickness. But the length of the cylinder works with or colludes with actually the door thickness the application in swing or out swing uh, are you adding panels to either side of the door effectively changing the thickness um, are you centering the lock in the center of the door so all of these things work together to require that you think about the length of the cylinder this client has ordered a pair of screws he clearly has a mortise lock because he's got a couple of screws for a door that's from two and a quarter to two and three quarter in thickness he's ordered a two inch extended lip strike so that's two inch may not be a tip as to what he's doing but an inch and three eighths um, long cylinder now because that cylinder is a quarter inch longer that tells me that he's probably has a two and a quarter inch thick door that he's centering you don't need a two inch extended lip strike you would really need a, an inch and a half extended lip strike for that application but he's probably got thicker than average casing, an additional half inch of something applied. It's probably why you need all of those parts. It's probably a two and a quarter inch thick door would be my guess. Centered in the door with some brick mold or some sort of casing that's requiring that extra half inch beyond the inch and a half that you would need. I come up with inch and a half because my theory is that it's two and a quarter versus inch and three quarter. We need an extra quarter inch. The standard strike is inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter plus quarter is inch and a half. He's asked for two inch. Has to be a casing condition. You know, it could also be an inset condition. The face of the door to the face of the frame could be a half of an inch. Uh, the door's just set in. There could have been jam extensions added to that, requiring that he had a two and a quarter inch thick door in a frame with half inch jam extensions. That could be it as well. Now, uh, in conventional uh, cylinders, this is not the common size in interchangeable core or small format or full size or large format inch and three-eighths is what you're going to get as the shortest length possible when you're dealing with like a seven pin cylinder uh, in a small format inch and three-eighths is going to be considered typical for removable or interchangeable core okay this is BSP I don't love how this is done black suede powder coat is just paint I don't like how they've washed all of that most of that logo out especially in the Y it is what it is the the market wants black they're not japanning uh, the hardware like it was a hundred years ago 120 years ago 140 years ago 
or it'd be dead black Japan or bright black Japan. This is just paint. For sure what I don't like is that they've not given us an 04 cylinder plug. 04 is satin brass. It really should be satin brass because that is more that that would be complementary to a black, a bronze, uh, uh, brass, any derivative of those. The satin nickel face on that plug is going to be for your nickels, your chromes, your stainless type finishes. This has the 2160 cam on the back and that's the standard cam for most Yale mortise locks. Not all, but most. That's just the, cam, the Yale cam, skinny and long. It's going to come with a cylinder collar which is here. What I don't like is they've not included a wave washer, but there you go. There ought to be a wave washer included with this would be my guess. But it's not included. I'm going to have to imagine that that is standard. That they do not include a wave washer. Looking at the catalog, it appears to be so. This is in the Para Kiwi, P-A-R-A. -A. That's short for paracentric. Uh, paracentric is a term that, imagine if I have lines like this, and I drew a line right down the center of it. Well, those diagonal lines I'm creating with my hand cross that vertical center line, making it paracentric when you cross the center line. It's the para kiwi, so it's paracentric, and we can see that by the profile of the key. If you look in the broaching of the plug and imagine a vertical center line there, you can see that that crosses the center line. Why is that important? It's simply helps deter manipulation of the cylinder by picking it because your tools are blocked to a certain degree from those wards that project into the keyway. Um, this is also a simplex key, and that's another term that we're throwing out there. Um, simplex means that it does not participate in a multiplex environment, meaning this key way, the keyway, stands alone. You can have other keyways, you can have a set of five of them, that there can be a key that sits on top of those five that would pass all five of those, making it an all section key blank. This doesn't participate in such an environment. It's a standalone keyway, and in fact is Yale's standard keyway. This is made of solid brass, so it's going to be a pretty smooth operation on the key. This is six pin, and they have the code literally the bidding or the key code literally on the bow itself, 674145. And if we were to study the depth, the, how deep those cuts were, the first one near the shoulder at the tip of my finger is a 6. The next one, a little deeper, is indeed a 7. Uh, and then down the line, Yale is a two-step increment uh, system where there are cuts 0 to 9. And um, that's a different conversation on the locksmithing aspect. Let's switch to the screen view now and take a closer look at the supporting documentation. Here is the item that we are looking at. Really, it's the part number. 2153 cylinder, inch and 3 eighths, 2160 cam. The client specified no collar, but there's one in the box anyway. It's a six pin cylinder in a para keyway in black suede powder coat. We have some images here. That's what the box looks like for this exact cylinder in this video. And these are listed shown down below. That's, that's the contents. Our cylinder, our side view, face of the cylinder, up close of the paracentric keyway. There's our vertical axis of pivoting. That shows the pin tumbler inside of there. The 2160 cam is here. Our two Yale original keys. That's the standard Yale bow. And that's that collar that they shipped in with it. Now, there's also a link below this video to the cut sheet. Let's take a closer look at that. Um, four pages in this document. Shows us the 2150 cylinder. The lengths that it can be ordered in. Okay. I'm quite surprised. I'm quite sure that they can do much longer lengths. These are just the lengths that are listed here. If you needed a two inch cylinder, I know they can make them. I've ordered them several times. Um, in a six pin, these are the lengths. Seven pin, that's available. The standard cam is the 2160. Okay. We scroll down, talks about the para keyway. It's also known as the E1R. You can order it either way. They, they mean the same thing. The E1R, um, you know, they have 
on the face of the box para um, keyway. And here's just quickly a small short explanation. If you just focus right here, this row of eight keyways right here. Just focus on these these eight keyways. This is a multiplex system. So if you had a building where you had two floors and you wanted to key the two floors separately, you would certainly do that. But you could also make it so that keys from the first floor won't even enter keys from the second floor. They won't physically fit the cylinder. Then the engineer can walk around with a multi-section blank. This is called a multiplex system. The PARA does not participate in any such multiplex system, and that is to an advantage um, because there are no other key blanks that can be cut other than a PARA to go into it. Um, and that has a particular application in, 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 in industry such as a hotel. Pardon me, let's back up. It has a particular application in industry such as a hospital where you'll want your narcotics locker to not share a keyway with any other key. Highly paracentric keys that are here. Talks about keyways themselves. I would encourage you to read that if you're even remotely interested. Shows the 2160 cam and other cams that can be put on the back of Yale locks for different lock manufacturers applications. This is what it's used for. Shows our collar. Um, this includes the 1765 collar. Uh, yes, it does. The 1765 collar is here. Is uh, what they've provided. And the A dimension, I don't know what that is, but I will tell that to you now. That A dimension is point, uh, pardon me, yeah, point 0.165, point 0.165, so about uh, 5 30 seconds of an inch, right, right in there is where that is. Now, there is a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the Yale products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, as well as a link to the manufacturer's website and the full product catalog is all here then. If you want to jump in your time machine and look at other full product catalogs, here they are from 1880 to 1937. Um, really, really fascinating to be able to look at what Yale was making 150 years ago, basically. 140 years ago, anyway. Um, the history of locks are, in, are unintentionally in those catalogs from the, basically from the Early, from the relatively early introduction of the pin tumbler cylinder all the way to uh, w when it's being sold alongside what they call their standard locks or bit key locks or lever tumbler or warded locks um, all the way up to where it's only pin tumbler cylinders and then high security versions of all of that. Really handy uh, resources on this page and this page is indeed where we will keep all of the Yale resources. Let's wrap up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, this is just going to be a mortise cylinder that's going to be generally used in a Yale mortise lock. You can use it in other items, anywhere where you have a key, uh, a Yale key system, if you want it keyed, uh, key bypass switches, alarm, turn, uh, alarm control, uh, trims on exit devices. There are four primary mortise cylinders. There's a peanut cylinder, which is three quarter inch. There's the standard mortise cylinder, which is one and five thirty seconds diameter. There's the master ring, which is inch and a half. It's also known as a jumbo cylinder. Then there's the mogul, which is a two inch. The one in five thirty seconds is the one that we all use and know, but those other three cylinder types exist as well. You will, if you're in the hardware industry, you're probably going to come across a master ring, at least in a reference at some point, or, or a mogul cylinder if you're dealing in any sort of detention work. The peanut cylinder is pretty unusual uh, unless you are bumping into um, aluminum storefront doors from, you know, the 1960s. It was known that there was a mortise lock that would take a small three-quarter inch peanut mortise cylinder. Anyway, 
useful information, perhaps. I hope it is. If there are any questions on the 2153 Yale mortise cylinder or any other Yale product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up. Please subscribe and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.